Hi everyone, um, so I'm back, I haven't actually done a video for so long, uh, it feels a bit weird speaking to a camera, um, if you follow my vlog you would have known that I've just recently, well, three days ago, moved into a new flat, um, so there was like packing and unpacking and losing things and just no time to do anything other than that, um, so, but I'm back now everything is unpacked and put away. Um, so, you know, hopefully I think it should be a bit more regular. Um, but I'm going to do a shop in my stash video today. I've seen quite a few of these around at the moment. Um, and I haven't actually bought, like, a single new product for so long. Just because I've been spending ridiculous amounts of money on rent and furniture and things. So, um, yeah. These are the kind of the products that I've, I've had for a while. Quite a long time, actually, some of them. Um, but I just, I used them, I went through a phase of really loving them and then I just put them away again. I don't know why, you know, bought something new and then <laughs> they got forgotten about. Um, so this is a few um, things that I've just been using loads at the moment that I haven't used for ages. Um, so the first thing is the cleanser. Um, you know I have an abundant amount of cleansers just rattling around in cupboards and things. Um, so a lot of them get forgotten about. But this one I, I bought and I loved it and I used it probably like twice before I put it away again. I'm not sure why. Um, but it's the Nip and Fab um, Clean Oil Fix. I went through a stage of just loving oil cleansers, like oil based cleansers and things. Like the MAC um, Cleanse Off Oil and the Shuimura one. Um, but this one is a bit different. It's kind of not so runny. It's more like a really gloopy, thick oil. Um, so it's more like a more moisturising than the ones that kind of just melt your makeup away. So it it takes all your makeup off, but it leaves your skin really um, kind of hydrated. So you get almost like a film of it over your skin after you wash it off, which I don't love. But then I would do another cleanse with it uh, with something else. Um, but it just is really moisturising and really luxurious, and it smells lovely. I've never thought of using like Nip and Fab before, but um, I saw this and picked it up on a whim from a shelf. Um, because I mainly think they do like cellulite creams and just like firming treatments and things. So I never thought of buying a cleanser from them. But I've been using that loads recently. Um, the second product is a hair one. Uh, this is the Aussie Miracle Hair Instrument Sleep and Conditioner. There's not a lot of this left. I think I put this away because I didn't want to use it all up. Even though it's pretty cheap. <laughs> I think it's about... Three or four pounds, you know, normal Aussie prices. Um, but this um, I used before I got my Moroccan oil and hair oils and things like that. So I just spray it on the ends um, and leave it in. So I kind of stopped doing that once, like when I got um, more expensive hair oils. But this I've been using quite a lot recently, just because it's kind of quite humid and um, hot outside. My hair just fluffs up like it goes <laughs> frizzy beyond belief. So. Um, I use this when it's wet and sometimes when it's dry too, just to like dampen down the ends and keep it moisturised so it's not so frizzy and fly away. Um, but it really leaves your hair kind of moisturised. If you don't like the feel of using hair oils, this is a really good one because it, it does the same sort of job, not quite as intense, um, but it's just a lot kind of uh, more lightweight so it won't weigh your hair down if you've got quite fine hair or anything like that. And so that's that one. And then... All the other products are kind of makeup ones. And that foundation that I've absolutely been loving at the moment, which I hated very much when I bought it, um, is the Chanel Vitalume Aqua. Now this got raved about um, beyond belief um, a few, well, it was about six or seven months ago, I think, when it came out. Um, and everyone had it and everyone loved it. Um, and I bought it. I went to Selfridges when I was in London and I bought this. And I just didn't. I liked it, but I didn't feel the hype, like I didn't understand what it was so raved about. Um, it's kind of a really lightweight foundation, it's one of the ones with the little ball, so I don't know if you can hear that. It, you know, you have to shake it up, like the Estee Lauder um, Invisible Fluid Makeup. Um, it's kind of like one of those foundations that are quite popular at the moment, that are really thin and lightweight, but give quite a lot of coverage. This, I found, like all Chanel foundations, just didn't last on my skin. I think that's why I stopped using it. Um, but you know, because if you have quite oily skin like I do, you will need like a primer, like Benefit Professional or some sort of like mattifying primer underneath, just so that it won't kind of run off. Uh, that's what I found anyway. 
Um, it doesn't powder very well, so that's another thing. If you like to powder it, your foundations, um, powder doesn't really help this last too long because it kind of goes a bit funny because it's quite a moisturising foundation because it's a you know, water-based aqua. Um, it it doesn't kind of really set on the skin. It always gives you that kind of like dewy finish. So you know, the powders don't work too well with those kind of foundations. Um, but I've been using this recently with a primer. Um, and I just found it gives a really nice glow to the skin. So because it's summer, you don't want to be wearing anything too heavy. Um, but this just gives like a nice amount of coverage. Not like excessively loads, but um, not as much as I think some people have made it out to be. Um, but it's just a nice kind of lightweight medium coverage foundation um, that gives you a nice healthy glow. So I've been using that loads. Really nice to put on as well, really kind of smoothing. Um, and then I've got quite a few blushes. I tend to just wear the same blusher every single day, which is usually either my sleek rose gold one, which is kind of like the Nars Orgasm dupe, um, or uh, Corey Stair Benefit one. But I've been loving Topshop blushes at the moment. I have so many of them. <laughs> this is only four. Um, these are my favourite ones. But I these used to be the only blushes I wore, kind of like at college, I remember. Was it that long ago? God, I feel old. <laughs> I used to wear these all the time. Um, I think Neon Rose was the first one I got, which looks like this. If you've ever had a Topshop blusher, you will know how unbelievably grubby the packaging gets in all Topshop makeup, actually. It's... It's really sleek packaging, but it's just so prone to being dirty and never coming off again. So yeah, this is this one. It's kind of like a a corally colour. It's quite a bright one. Um, this is actually the one I've got at the moment. You can see, um, but it's it's just a really it's kind of like a cream formula that goes to powder. Um, that's what most of them are. Um, so it kind of it doesn't flatten the skin out by you know being a powder blush. Um, but they're really kind of good colours, they really last a long time. And then Flush is another one I've been using loads. It's kind of like more muted, it's more of like a light pinky colour. I'll show you the two together. Um, so that's more of like a natural one. And then, what's the other one? Oh, Head Over Heels, this is the most recent one I bought quite a while ago. It's more like a peachy colour. I'm not sure this one suits my skin tone so well. Um, you have to be careful kind of what other colours you're wearing, like your lips and things, because I can usually just put on whatever lipstick with the, whatever brush I'm wearing. I don't tend to match them up too well. But this one I find gives quite a quite a peachy colour, so you have to be careful what other colours you wear. But I do really like that one still. And then the last one's Pinch, and this is quite bright. This is a really kind of bright fuchsia fluorescent pink. Um, so you really sparingly use this, but it's nice. It's kind of like a really um, flushed glow you get with this one, so like a nicer winter really, like that real nice flushed kind of been out in the cold look. Um, so yeah, I've been using those so much recently, um, and they've just been kept in my drawer for some reason, I don't know why I stopped using them, but um, yeah, loving those. And another blush actually is the Sleek Nude Collection Suede, is it called Suede? I bought this, I went mad for sleek ages ago and I bought like their whole collections they used to do, so they had like the nude one and then something else. Um, so I bought the whole collection and the nude eye palette and the lips, uh, the lip balm and then the blush. Um, but I just stopped using them because, I don't know, I do like sleek but I find their products are quite powdery. So um, not, the blushes are brilliant, I do love the brushes but like the eyeshadows and things aren't so well pigmented so this just got chucked to the bottom of the drawer with all of that um, but it's I mean it looks quite brown it looks almost like a bronzer but if you use this on the cheeks it just gives a really natural kind of warm glow so not a pinky colour it's got a slight bit of pink in it but it's more just um, more like a bronzy bronzy kind of colour so if you don't want to wear you want to wear a blush but you don't want it to be kind of like really pink and in your face, then this is a really nice natural one. Really good for fair skin as well, like mine. Um, I don't usually, I find bronzer kind of just worn on its own just looks really weird on my skin. Um, so I always usually need a blush. But um, this one on its own is really nice. So I've been using that a lot as well. Not when I'm not wearing a lot of makeup or if I don't want anything like too strong. Um, yeah, so that's all the blushes. And then a few other products. Um, one is an eyeliner. This is the Maybelline Gel Liner with a little pop, um, which I'm sure everyone's seen before. 
Um, I don't. I have like a love hate relationship with gel eyeliner. I, in the morning, I just I don't fuss over my makeup. I try and do it as quickly as possible. So I like using something that's going to be, you know, easily done. I always wear eyeliner. Um, so I usually just use like a pen one, which is just quick and easy. Um, but I do like the way this looks. So as I've had quite a lot of time recently, I have been off for like the last week and a half. Um, so. I've actually been, you know, trying, <laughs> spending a bit more time on my makeup. So yeah, I do love this gel eyeliner. It just stays on a lot longer. It gives more of a darker colour than the pen ones, which can sometimes, you know, go a bit grey over the day. Um, but this one just, it gives like a really nice black thick line. Um, and it's just, it's, it's easy to apply. It's just me being lazy who likes to take five seconds um, to do my makeup in the morning. Um, so I've been using that quite a lot. The next product is a mascara, um, and this is Rimmel, what's it called? Rimmel Glamise, the day to night one. It's one of the ones where you have the brush that pulls out with a little bit of product on it, and then you take it out the second bit and it has more. So one side is lengthening, one's volumising. Um, and there's quite there's quite a few of these kind of mascaras around a while ago, like the Bourjois one and Mac um, Mac one, I think they did as well. Um, but it's just a nice like everyday mascara, so I use the volumising one first and then comb it through with the lengthening brush. Um, and it just is like a nice everyday mascara, it's not amazing, it, it kind of goes on quite wet so you can build up quite a big kind of like thick lash but it's it's not as good as my favourite which is Max Factor um, Full Slash Effect. But um, it's just a really good mascara and I've been using that you know every single day. Um, it's good we've got the little brush which you can do the bottom lashes with too and not kind of smudge it too much. Um, so that's that one. And then the last product is a lipstick. Um, I never ever wear lipstick at all unless it's a bright red. I just don't think lipstick suits me if it's like a neutral kind of pinky tone. Um, but this one I've had for a while. Um, it's the e.l.f. What's it called? Runway Pink. And it's kind of, this is what I've got at the moment. It's kind of like, um, I wouldn't usually buy a lipstick this cheap, I think it was like three pounds or something. Um, we know how L for quite um, reasonable price. Um, but I just really like the formula for kind of quite a le le less expensive product. It's really um, creamy and rich, and it doesn't kind of dry your lips out, and it goes on really smoothly. Um, but I just think the colour of all the nudes I have, it kind of suits me the best. Um, so I've been wearing that quite a lot actually. Um, I usually just wear like lip balm or something on my lips, but this I've been trying to wear. I'm trying to get through my stack of lipsticks that I actually have that I never wear. Um, so this, I, I picked it up and I started using it, but I actually really like the way it looks. So those are all the products that I've been using recently that I've had for ages. Um, and I do think it's a really good thing to do to kind of like shop your stash and see what you've got hanging around in the back of a drawer because, you know, more than likely you'll find something that you really love that you've completely forgotten about. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy that and I'll see you soon.